Today, let's discuss about one very specific facet of the treatment of a cervical spinal problem. When we think of the spine in general, we think of our back. So it could be the back of the neck, the back of the chest or the lower back. But interestingly, when we think about the treatment for the same, especially surgical treatment, we do not restrict ourselves as surgeons to the back itself. Interestingly, one of the most commonly used, the most popular approach to a cervical spinal problem is from the front. So, to cure a problem which is bothering your cervical spine, many a times we approach it surgically from the front. And I will tell you exactly why we use this route. Most of the cervical spinal problems, especially the degenerative ones, occur because the spinal cord or the roots which emanate from it are being compressed. And usually they are being compressed by a disc or an osteophyte means a bony overgrowth. Now this disc osteophyte complex compresses the root causes pain or causes symptoms of myelopathy or symptoms because of compression of the spinal cord itself. So if you think about it logically now if the problem is from the front means if there is something coming from the front and compressing the root and the cord why not approach it from the front and that is precisely what we do. If you see the accompanying image, you will get a fair amount of idea about what I'm talking about. The advantage, as you must have already understood, is obvious. It is a straightforward route straight to the problem zone first. The other advantage is we actually bypass the spinal cord or the root because they are behind the problem causing agent. So we deal with the problem first and then encounter the spinal cord or the root. Thus the possibility of any damage to these vital structures obviously goes down. Apart from that, the approach by itself is rather easy. We actually have a highway which goes right onto the front of the spine. So the approach is straight from here. You've got to dissect out a few muscles, uh, take care of the carotid artery, the internal jugular vein and you're directly landing on the anterior cervical spine. We have to choose the disc which is causing the problem and deal with it. What happens is the anterior cervical discectomy involves going and removing a disc which is around 5 to 6 mm thick and that is the area that is available for us to see so the only access that we actually have is that area of 5 to 6 mm and that goes all the way up to the spinal cord so it's it's 5 to 6 uh, millimeters of height and it and the depth is around one and a half to two centimeters so we have to deal with the problem through that small zone and with magnification being available it becomes that much more easy microscope obviously also throws in a lot of light inside makes the whole uh, place light up better uh, and that is how the problem that you would think of being associated with spinal surgery disappear when we start operating with a microscope because the damage to the spinal cord and the root is obviously prevented because structures can be seen well. And we go through that disc and remove the disc itself and the offending uh, extruded disc or the offending osteophyte and the compression is relieved. Apart from that, we can deal with multiple levels to the same approach. So if I want to deal with two or three discs, I can do the same thing. This approach also has some cosmetic benefits. The incision is placed along the cervical skin folds. So after a week or so, the incision becomes almost impossible. So not even your closest friend can make out that you've undergone a cervical spine surgery. So that's it about the anterior cervical approach to the spine. An interesting, but yes, a very, very effective approach to reach 
the cervical spine and deal with the problems associated with it. Thank you.